Aha! Got this thing running. Okay, I hope George isn't worried now because I was having some technical issues with the camera, but it looks like I have everything figured out now. So, let's see here. Okay. Can someone share in the chat that everything looks and sounds okay? Uh, if there's too much background noise, if anyone wants to let me know, that'd be great. started here in just one second. I just want to make sure everything is audible and we're good to go. So I'm going to just wait for a confirmation from someone. Anybody? <laughs> All right. One more second and we'll get this thing going. I guess I could check myself. I don't know what show I made an ad for. Oh, okay, there. Everyone's saying you can see and hear me fine. Super. I'm going to get going here. All right, well, my name's Megan Duffield. I work with Silver Circle at Lime Plot Productions in Cambridge, Massachusetts. For those of you who don't know me, um, I'm really happy with the Unconference. I think it's been going great over the past year. The first one was a huge success, so it looks like this one's going to be just the same. Um, I'm just going to start out with a little update about what's going on with the movie and then move into uh, the discussion I had planned today about marketing outside of the Liberty Movement. I myself am the, am the marketing manager for Silver Circle and I've had a ton of experience this past year and a half in getting to know people um, that I might not be comfortable talking about these sort of philosophies with. Um, and not so much uncomfortable, but you know, you don't want to scare someone away right off the bat. You don't want to intimidate them and you also don't want to get in an argument with the person. So, uh, so what's going on with Silver Circle? Uh, one great update is this, or yesterday, we all sent in the Sundance copy for the Sundance submission deadline, which is Monday. So we sent that in yesterday, and it was a huge milestone we've been working towards. And we did send a work in progress, so it wasn't a completed film, but that's you know expected sometimes in film festivals because the film festival isn't until January. So we still have plenty of time to catch up and have a finished product for them if it's something that they're interested in accepting into the festival. So. Um, I'd say right now our animation, we're probably about 85 to 90 percent of the way through. Almost all the scenes are animated. Just a few more left to go. And our next appearance will be at New York Comic Con, um, which is October 13th through the 16th in, at the Javits Center in New York. And a really exciting thing about this appearance is we're going to be holding a test screening for, our, for the New York Comic Con attendees. So if you come in on Saturday, October 15th at 7.45 in room 1A18, we're going to be screening the whole entire film. We're also going to have comment cards for everyone who attends uh, to fill out, tell us what you thought, confusing parts, how you feel about certain characters, etc. So it's really exciting for us. We have a couple more test screenings lined up, one in Boston and the other in Washington, D.C. So we're very busy, um, really trying to get the word out about the film. I hope all of you have heard about it. If not, please check us out. It's, you, know, you can learn more about the film at silvercirclemovie.com. Um, and also, we are looking for bloggers right now for our website. So 
if you have you know any writing skills that you're interested in tossing our way, by all means, um, you know, oops, by all means, join the uh, Silver Circle crew. Shoot us a resume at um, intern at silvercirclemovie.com. Um, and or blogger at silvercirclemovie.com because we're looking for someone to uh, help us out even more than just blogging. You know, we need some help digging up uh, media opportunities, you know, connecting with influentials, connecting with other blogs, and like what I'm talking about today, moving the message outward. So there's the rundown on Silver Circle. And, you know, once again, thank you everybody who's listening right now for supporting us so far. We're having a lot of fun. It's a lot of work, and thank you for being so patient, and we'll hopefully have a movie for you here by the end of the year. So I'm going to get started with my discussion about marketing outside of liberty. And, you know, all of us, a lot of people say all the time, you know, we can't sit here in our little group and expect, I mean, it, it is true that a small group of people are usually the ones that enact change and revolution. I mean, if you look through history, that, you know, shows you that's exactly how you know it works so in in this situation though when we're talking about you know bringing liberty you know bringing the non-aggression principle to the forefront of everyone's minds um, in order to spread that message outside of this liberty movement we need to start thinking about more broad topics and trying to find common grounds elsewhere so um, I wrote up kind of a little intro here that I wanted to share with you all. And I think sometimes that we forget there is a vast world outside of this passionate and peaceful movement. Sometimes we do forget. I forget myself, you know, and then I run into a friend and I'm all excited to tell them about something that's going on. For instance, the Boston Freedom, Freedom Rally, which had, you know, one day where marijuana was not prohibited cops weren't taking people away and handcuffing them for a nonviolent crime. People were peacefully assembling and, you know, participating in smoking marijuana, which it didn't hurt anyone, but it, it was so exciting. And I shared this with a friend, and they're, they don't understand, you know, the core value of it. Oh, a bunch of kids smoking pot. No, actually, there were activists there. There were people talking about traumatic experiences they had with law enforcement. So things like that, you know, you have to kind of scale back every once in a while and say, wow, you know, the world is bigger and there's tons of people with ideas that haven't even come near where the liberty movement's ideas are. And I am going to speak generally about the liberty movement. Um, when I do say it, I'm encompassing everyone that I've come in contact with that I have very strong philosophical connections with. So, you know, the agorists, the voluntarists, the libertarians, the people that are in the Libertarian Party, for Pete's sake. I mean, I, I feel connected to them on some level. Ron Paul supporters. Um, if you want, you know, 9-11 truthers, you know, because that's, I feel like that's one community in itself because uh, there's so much focus on it. So, um, I'll go ahead and continue. Many people disregard the sheeple is what, a lot of people like to call them the ones who maybe are more apathetic or just kind of go along with what the state tells them to as lost causes. And I can't speak for everyone, but <laughs> I was once a member of that sheeple family. And I, I think that's a case for, for a lot of people. And it all kind of, you know, cycles its way out by that sheep, sheeple that person that acts like a sheep and follows the direction of the state, at one point, I mean, there's always a, some point of redemption, and that person's going to get stabbed in some way, shape, or form. Their sacred cow is going to get stabbed. And when that happens, that's what's going to send them into a whirlwind of, of learning about truth and learning about personal responsibility and liberty and, you know, getting away from this coercive system that we live in. So, um, you know, we shouldn't, you know, not count in the sheeple. Yes, maybe they're a pain as of right now in terms of activism, and you get so aggravated whenever you're passing out a flyer that's so meaningful to you, and they take it and throw it on the ground. It's not that they're a lost cause. It's just you're not, you know, stabbing at their sacred cow in that time frame. And it might not be that you're not stabbing at their sacred cow. 
It could be that they just don't feel like talking to someone today. And we all know we have those days too, so we shouldn't write them off at all. And I've heard a lot of negative language about anyone, including, you know, law enforcement, including, um, you know, friends that people disconnect with who don't subscribe to the non-aggression principle, that, you know, they're uninvited to liberty or, you know, people who aren't critical thinkers shouldn't even be welcome into the liberty movement. And it's, it disheart it's disheartening to me because, I, like I said before, I think everyone has a moment of redemption. I haven't always been a liberty activist. I once was completely obsessed with music and, you know, what my friends were doing as opposed to, you know, what was actually happening in the world around me and people that were dying and people that aren't eating and um, people are getting thrown in cages for eating the wrong kind of food. Um, so I think we need to keep an, you know, an open ear and an open heart to those people and still be able to connect with them as much as possible. And uh, things are changing, and we all know that. And this isn't, you know, the 1980s libertarian movement anymore, the 1990s libertarian movement anymore. The stakes are way higher, and the population is so much more interactive. I mean, we see this every day. You know, the Occupy Wall Street is a great example. That, I mean, it didn't get as much um, focus as it wanted and maybe not as much heads at the actual event. But, you know, something like that can happen in the spur of a moment and go viral, and next thing you know, you're interacting with hundreds of thousands of people across the world, not even just in the United States. And the diversity of ideas and personalities is also growing. So... We're not all dealing with, sorry if this offends anyone, but maybe libertarians that weren't as social or maybe didn't, you know, were more academic, academically focused. Now we're talking about getting liberty into mainstream ideas. I mean, we had Vince Vaughn <laughs> introducing Ron Paul at the LPAC event. And I, I say we, but I mean, you know, the people in the liberty movement got to experience Vince Vaughn, who is a huge, um, you know, A-list actor. No one would have typically think to themselves, we're going to, you know, pursue the ideas of liberty by getting A-list actors to sign on and influence everyone just from their presence being there. But that's the way some personalities are working these days. We live in a highly um, stimulated uh world, you know, when it comes to media, movies, music, social media, the internet, everything on the internet can just bombard you in one day and knock you over. So I think we do need to realize that it's changing. Everything's changing around us and it's moving faster. And I don't think this is the peak by any means of how technology is going to enhance this movement and just enhance the communication around the world for the good or for the bad. So that also leads me into something I've kind of, I've probably said this a couple times that, you know, we can't be, you, you can't always use a case study, an essay, or a beautifully written piece of literature to bring someone to the liberty movement. And, um, you know, not everyone's going to be thrilled to read an essay about why the free market shouldn't be blamed, you know, can't be blamed for any of the economic calamity that we see today. It's going to be really difficult to get someone, um, you know, who has grown up, let's say, you know, a 17 or 18 year old today who's grown up with nothing but internet, fast images, all the information in 140 characters. It's going to be really, going to be really hard to get them to read a piece of literature like that. So, I, I think we need to start focusing more on understanding each other and maybe even feeling someone out whenever you are pursuing them because not everything's going to be a one size fit all message. So when you're approaching someone, get a feel for them, get to know them before you bombard them with statistics and uh, quotes and things like that. Um, it's kind of like the whole idea of finding that common ground or finding their sacred cow 
and then moving in. So it's a little bit of a micromanaging idea because you're going in and finding the little things about someone where you think you can you can get on the same level um, to communicate the ideas of liberty. So I put together some examples for everyone to take with them today. Um, I'm wondering if there have been any questions. I'm not sure. Um, I guess I can look because they're not coming up here on the side. Let me just see if any questions have popped up yet or if there's any complaints. <laughs> um, Let's design a vacation on a budget with Expedia. I can, yeah. I can turn this down. Okay, so everyone says it, it looks good and we could learn a lot from the French Revolution is what Kevin Gee said. So um, I'll ask if anyone has any questions yet and then I'll continue into a list of examples on how we can um, get into the liberty movement, how we can get into the liberty, get other people into the liberty movement by kind of micromanaging and